Hey guys, my name is Trevor Sullivan and welcome back to my video channel. Thanks so much for joining me. Please make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment and let me know what you think of this video series and any other topics that you might be interested in seeing in the future on my video channel. What we're going to be talking about today is an extension of the Windmill platform. If you've been following the last several videos that I've created as part of the windmill.dev playlist on my channel, you'll know that I've been taking a look at this Windmill low-code platform that allows you to build web-based user interfaces, you can schedule background scripts, and you can use your backend scripts written in Python, Golang, Bash, and other languages in order to provide a backing service for a web user interface. So this helps to minimize the amount of code that you have to write in order to get a graphical application up and running. And all you really have to know is how to do your backend automation and wire up a few things on the front end of your graphical interface. So we're going to be exploring Windmill. Also, you can self-host Windmill, and I actually use Windmill on my own self-hosted infrastructure. It actually just runs on a virtual machine on top of one of my bare metal LexD hosts running Ubuntu server. So uh, it's very easy to self-host. You can deploy with Docker Compose. You can deploy as a Kubernetes Helm chart as well. So it's really easy to spin up your own environment, which will give you access to unlimited executions of code so that you're not limited by the free tier on the paid platform that's typically used by businesses or enterprises. So what we're gonna be doing is taking a look at a sample application that I built here. And what I decided to do for this particular demo is actually bridge together a couple of different concepts. So in my earlier video series, I was covering LexD, which allows you to deploy virtual machines and system containers on Linux very easily. So I strongly encourage you to go check out LexD. But what I decided to do in this case is to actually build my own personal custom user interface for LexD. Now, granted, the functionality that I've exposed thus far is pretty limited in nature, but what's really amazing about this is how little time it took me to actually build a simple graphical interface that I can use to manage my LexD virtual machines. And you might be saying, well, hey, Trevor, did you know that there's a web-based user interface for LexD that's actually built into it? It's native, it's supported by the LexD team. And yes, I am aware of that, don't worry, but I wanted to just kind of play around with this to see how easy it is to integrate Windmill with other platforms such as LexD. So as you can see, my user interface here is pretty simple. It basically just has this tabular view that shows me some basic information about my LexD virtual machines. I can see the name of my virtual machines. I can see if it's a virtual machine or a container. I can also see the status. Is it running? Is it stopped? And then over here on the far right hand side, I can see that I have this actions uh, column and inside of each of the table rows here representing each virtual machine or container, I have this option to simply delete the resource from my LexD server. I also have this button up here that I can use to forcibly reload my list of virtual machines. So if I was to maybe stop or start one of my virtual machines, let me do that really quick with an LXC stop U01. And then as soon as that virtual machine stops, I should be able to just refresh by doing load LexD VMs. And you should see that the status of that virtual machine changes to stopped. Also, I can just go in here and click on that delete VM button and that'll delete the virtual machine and it should refresh my view. I think I introduced a bug here though, so it's not gonna work right at the moment, but I did incorporate that capability to delete a virtual machine. It refreshes the view automatically. So after that VM is gone, it just refreshes and I would just be left with U02 inside of this table. I also implemented a feature down here called Start Auto Refresh. So if I click on that, it changes to a cancel button. But what that'll do is automatically refresh the tab table right here with the view of my infrastructure so that if I do something like LXC Start on U01, I don't actually have to click on the load button. It'll actually just refresh every 5,000 milliseconds or five seconds, and it'll grab the latest and greatest data representing my infrastructure on my LexD standalone server. 
It could also work with a cluster as well, but for now I just have a standalone LexD virtual machine running, and that's what I'm connected to here. So anyways, we're going to kind of build this up from scratch. I don't know exactly if we'll get to all the functionality that I implemented here, but I did want to show you how I went about building this solution completely from scratch so that hopefully you can replicate that in your own environment and hopefully glean some of the techniques that I've used to build this solution to help you build alternative solutions similar to what I've created here. So what's actually happening behind the scenes before we actually get into building the solution is when I click on buttons like load LexD VMs or delete VM right here, what's actually happening is a Python script is getting kicked off in the background of Windmill and it's actually using the Paramico library for Python, which allows you to create SSH sessions. And so I'm actually creating an SSH session to my LexD server, and it's querying some data using the JSON syntax, and then it's returning that data back to the Windmill application, where I can parse that data and turn it into a tabular format that you see right here. So let's go ahead and actually start building out this solution. So what I'm going to do for now is actually create a new separate workspace. I've got a lot of different resources that I've already created in my primary workspace right here. So I'm going to just go ahead and start by creating a brand new workspace. So we'll go up to my workspace manager and say plus workspace. And I'll just call this LXD manager. And I'll just click on create workspace down here. And so now I'm going to work in a fresh environment. So this is kind of like starting from complete scratch here. So hopefully when you're following along in your windmill server, you should see essentially the same thing. So the first thing that we're going to do is just kind of stub out our application here. In the top left here for the app summary, I'll just call this LXD VM manager. You can call this whatever you want to. Oops, let me see if I can type properly there. And then I'm also going to add in a display text component right here just to introduce my application. We'll do LXD VM management tool as our title right here. And then we'll incorporate some different user interface elements to make this interactive. So for starters, we're going to need a table view so that we can actually display the data from our LexD server. And I'm also going to move this right underneath the title there. So we start with the title and then we can just scroll down a little bit and see our table right here. You'll notice that when we drag the table element over here, we have this download button by default. And this allows you to download the data set that's inside of this table. But I don't really want that to appear. So on the right hand side for the configuration of this table component, I'll just disable the download button feature there. And so that'll just make it disappear. And now we'll just be left with our data. Now, the other thing I want to do is make sure that I name my elements here. I don't really care about naming the title here because we're not going to be interacting with that at all. But for things like the table here, I'm just going to do TBL LXD VMs, for example. And that'll just let me see in the component list right over here very quickly which resource or component that is in the component list. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is to just remove the default data from the table. As you can see, there's just two static entries right here in the table. They're just a couple of JSON objects that have an ID, name, and age properties. So we'll just click on the X to get rid of those items. So we'll have an empty table, but we're actually going to connect this to a data source a little bit later on, and that will retrieve the data from our LexD server. Also, if you want to, we can go ahead and just add in a button here as well. Let's do plus button and let's move it over to the right hand side here just to be consistent with the UI that I gave you a preview of. I'm going to make that button a little wider by choosing the fill container right here. So that I'll go ahead and just fill out that UI element a little bit more. And let's rename that to load LXD VMs. And then we'll bind our script to that button so that we can forcibly update our list of data from our LexD system. And I'm not going to implement the auto refresh button. So for now, I'm not going to add that other button. So now that we have a really basic setup here for our environment, our user interface, let's actually just rename this component to btn load data. 
and we'll confirm that as well. So now it's time for us to save a draft of our application. And now that we have the user interface built out, what we'll do next is to implement a script to load the data into this table. So what we're going to do is come back to our workspace over here. And instead of creating a new application with a user interface, this time we're going to actually create a background script that we can run in order to load the data from our LexD server over SSH. So what we're going to do is just give this script a name like LXD load VMs. And in the summary here, we'll say loads VM data from LexD server over SSH connection. And then we're going to choose the language of Python here because the Paramico library that we use it to SSH into a machine, run a command, and get the data back is written in Python. And so now what we're going to do is just go into the actual script right here. And we're going to kind of clean out the default code that's provided by the sample function here for Windmill. So we'll just return empty for now. And then in our input parameters here, we need to be able to act, act, input some data into this function, right? So let me get rid of these comments here. So one of the things that we're going to need to specify as input is the host name or IP address of the system that we want to connect to. So we'll do host name as a string, and I'll set the default value to the IP address of my LexD server, which in this case is 10.0.0.139. And then we also need to plug in a username. So let's do username for SSH as a string. And I'll use Ubuntu as the default value. Of course, we can always override that when we actually call this particular script. And then I'm going to specify a password here as a string of windmill123. Now, the other thing that we need to do is run a particular command. So on our LexD server here, if we do LXC list, we can see a list of the virtual machines that are currently up and running on our server here. But in order to get this data into a format that our Windmill app can interpret, we actually need to turn these virtual machines into JSON format. A lot of different command line utilities out there, like kube control for Kubernetes clusters, or in this case, the LXC CLI tool for LexD, actually provide certain parameters if we take a look at the parameters down here, we have format and the default is table, which is the default display that we see right up here. But we don't want this tabular view. We want to get a JSON message in return. So we can simply specify for dash dash format equals JSON, and that'll give us a huge JSON message instead. So in our terminal, if we test this out, say LXC list, dash dash format equals JSON. You can see that we get this huge line of JSON text, and that's what we're going to take from the Paramico SSH session in Python and send back to the Windmill user interface so that we can parse this data and display it inside of our table. Now, another thing that you could do if you want to actually see a little bit more structured data is just pipe into the JQ CLI here, and that'll actually kind of pretty print or pretty format the text right here so you can see the actual properties and the values in green. So this is a much nicer way to kind of see the structure of the data so that you know which properties you want to pick out from this data. All right, so what we're going to do is come back to our script and we're going to just specify a variable here like CMD and set this to LXC list dash dash format equals JSON, and then we'll pass that command into the Paramico library after we establish a connection. I'm going to remove these imports up here because we don't need the OS library, which is built into Python, and we also don't need the WMIL library either. But what we're going to do is say import Paramico, and that will automatically install Paramico if you don't have it, because Windmill actually looks for your import statements, and it'll automatically resolve and install those dependencies from the Python package index for you. So what we'll do now, now that we have Paramico imported, is we'll go to the Paramico library. And we'll say that we want to create an SSH client object. And we need to capture that object into a variable like client. You can call that variable whatever you want to. But then on that client, what we want to do is to actually execute a command. Of course, we need to make sure that we log in first. So we're going to use this connect method right here. 
And in the connect method, we can pass in a host name. The default port is 22, so we don't have to worry about specifying that, but we do need to specify a username and a password for our SSH connection so that we can authenticate to our Linux virtual machine that has LexD installed. So what we'll do is just plug in some named parameters here, say hostname equals the hostname input to our function, which is coming from right up here. We'll also specify username equals username, again, as an input from our function right here. And then finally, we'll specify that the password field will be equal to password that we pass in from our function here. All right, so once we are connected to the client, we can go ahead and say client.exec command. And this is gonna take an input parameter as a string right here. And this is basically just the command that we want to run on the server. And then we get this tuple back that has a few different return values. The middle return value here is index number one because it's a zero based index. So this standard input here would be index zero. The channel file here, which is standard out, is going to be index one. And then the final tuple parameter here is going to be index number two in the return value. Now we can ignore the zero and number two indexes, but we'll grab the number one index from that tuple so that we can get access to the standard output from the command. So we'll just say exec command and just plug in CMD right here. And we want to make sure that we capture the result here in a variable as well. And then the standard out is going to come from result index one. So we'll just capture standard out in a variable. And then we need to make sure that we read all of the lines from standard out. So we'll just do standard out dot read lines. And then we're just going to index into that array of lines that are read. And we're going to grab the very first line of output, which should contain the entire JSON payload from our LXC command. So what we're going to do now is just return this line right here. And we also want to make sure that we turn that JSON text into an object. So what we're going to do is actually import the JSON library right up here. And we will return. Let me just get uh, line output as a variable. And then we'll do json.loads and we'll load the line output variable. So we're gonna turn that entire JSON payload into a Python object and then return that Python object back to the windmill user interface. Now there's one other thing that we need to do here as well, and that's going to be to set our host key policy here. So what we're gonna do is say set missing host key policy. And if you've ever used the SSH command line to connect to a Linux virtual machine, you've probably seen that you have to accept the host key. So what we're gonna do in this case is just use the host key policy to automatically add. So we're gonna go into Paramico and we're gonna look for the auto add policy here so that when we connect to a new host, we just automatically add that host to our known hosts for our SSH client. So that should make sure that we automatically accept the host key. In general, in a production application, that would not be a secure setting, but because I'm working in a pretty controlled environment, it's okay for testing purposes to do this because our main focus of this lesson isn't really to learn about SSH, it's to learn how to connect things in Windmill. So let's go ahead and save this. So we'll do a save draft up here. And again, it has a name of LexD load data or load VMs or something like that. So what we'll do is just test with the default parameters here and see what we get back. And as you can see in our results right down here, we get two keys back. Remember, I have two virtual machines in my environment here. And so if we get two items back from our JSON array, then that should represent our virtual machines. So we'll just click this checkbox to enable JSON and then expand our array. And as you can see, index zero, or the first element that comes back, has a name of U01. It has a type of virtual machine. We could drill into a bunch of the child properties and get information about it, but we're just going to send this data back to our windmill UI. So let's go ahead and deploy this function so that it's usable by our user interface. And now we're going to head back to the user interface and wire up our user interface to that function. So back here in our user interface, we'll just click on edit down here. And now what we want to do is to kick off that script 
using this button right here. So on button load data, we'll say select a script or flow. We'll go over to our workspace scripts. And of course, we only have one script right there. So we'll go ahead and select that script. And for now, we're just going to leave the default inputs here. But of course, we could change the host name. We could also add another text box as input where we can actually enter a custom host name if we want to, a custom username, a custom password, and all that. But for now, we're just going to use these default parameter values just to keep our logic relatively simple. Now, when we actually run this script, the result is going to get assigned back to this button under this result property that you see on the left-hand side here. Now, because the script hasn't been executed, the result is currently showing as undefined, but we can actually go ahead and do a save draft here, and then we can click on this button, even in the development mode right here, and you'll see that our result gets populated with this array of raw JSON data from our LXD server. So we've wired things up successfully to where we're loading data into our user interface from our LexD server over an SSH connection. But as you can see, our table is still empty here. So how do we actually get the data into our table from the data in the result property of our button? Well, what we can do is go ahead and implement a script that can execute so that we can actually interpret this JSON data and then load it into our table. So what we'll do is go over to our table itself. And at the moment, we don't have any data source set for our table right here. But what we can actually do is create a script that loads the data into this table here. So what we'll do is define a function right here. And we're just going to create an inline script. And we're going to use front end JavaScript down here as our language. So inside of this script, what we want to do is basically grab the data from btn load data, grab the result property, and then interpret that and grab the relevant properties that we want for our table. So we'll go ahead and just clear out the default script right here. And we're going to write a really simple script. So what we're going to do is say that we're going to go out to button load data dot result. And if that is undefined, so we'll say if button load data dot result is equal to undefined, then we are going to go ahead and just say console dot log no VM data found. However, in our else statement down here, what we'll do is take the array of results right here and we'll iterate over it and grab certain properties from each element. So we'll say button load data dot result dot map and then we'll take each value from the array and pass it into an anonymous function right here and we're going to return a custom json object for each element within the json array so for starters we'll just plug in the name which will be val dot name next we'll grab the state i think it is and we'll do val dot state and then we also want to grab the type. And I'll actually put that in the middle here. So we'll say val.type. And so that should grab the name of the virtual machine, the type, which is either container or virtual machine, depending on what type it is. And then we also have state down here, which should contain either running or stopped, depending on the state of each container or virtual machine. All right. So what we can do now is just go ahead and save this. And let's make sure that we are returning all this data as well. So I'm actually going to do a return statement right here that returns this mapped value back to the client. So what we'll do is just hit preview right here. We'll go to load LXD VMs and see what happens. And it looks like something isn't quite working here. So let's go back to our editor. What I think I need to do is down under the button is make sure that I trigger an update of the table after we click the button. So right down here on the button, we have trigger runnables on success. So what we'll do is just enable LXD VMs and that'll cause the UI script to get executed every time that we click on that button. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. We'll go back over to preview. We'll click on our button. And now it looks like we are getting a little bit of invalid data here. So let's see what's going on. So what we're doing is we're actually getting the entire state sub property here, whereas we only want the actual status of the virtual machine. 
So instead of just grabbing the entire state in our front end script, we'll go ahead and do val.state.status. And we'll go ahead and save that. Let's go ahead and try to run this again. And now you can see that we have all of the fields that we wanted from our JSON result. So if we were to, let's say, maybe stop one of these virtual machines right here, let's do LXC stop on U01, and we come back in here and click on our button that will reload the data. It'll trigger the UI script to update the table from the state of the button. And now you can see that U01 is stopped. Let's go ahead and start it back up once again. And in just a moment, if we click on the button to reload our data, we should see that it's running again. All right, so now we've got everything wired up properly to where we can load data from our SSH connection, run a command, get that JSON data back, and display it. But what if we wanted to provide the ability to delete these virtual machines directly inside of the table as well? So we're going to go back to our editor here and make sure that we select our table in the left-hand component list right here. And the table actually allows us to bind actions to the table items right here. So what we're going to do is scroll down a little bit on the right-hand side where you see table actions, and we can add a button. We can also add a toggle. So we could do like maybe a startup or shutdown with a toggle switch right there. And then we can also add in a list of items right here as well. But I'm going to use a button in this particular case. And what we do is go over to the component list on the left, go down to the child of the table, and you'll see that we have this new element here that represents the button. But the button is actually an iterator for each item inside of the table. So for the button, what we're going to do is plug in a label that says delete instance. And then we need to bind an action to this button so that it deletes the virtual machine that's associated with each row inside of the table here. So what we need to do for starters is to save our draft here and then implement a simple script that deletes the virtual machine. So let's go to our sample script right over here that loads data. And we're going to copy this. And then we're going to create a new Python script called LXD delete VM. And we'll say deletes a VM from an LXD server over SSH. And then for the code here, we'll just paste in our previous example that does a list operation. But now we're going to change the command to LXC delete. And then we're going to specify the name of the instance that we want to delete. And we'll follow it by dash dash force. So what I'm going to do here is change these to single quotes. And we'll put an F in front here to make it a format string. And we're also going to accept an additional parameter, which is going to be a VM name as a string value. And then in curly braces, we'll substitute VM name for this parameter right here so that when we actually render the final command, it'll be LXC delete VM name dash dash force. Now, the other code here can stay the same because we still are going to be establishing the same SSH connection. We just have to make sure that we pass in the correct VM name from our user interface. So let's go ahead and save our draft and then deploy this function. And then we can wire things up to pass the VM name into our Python script. So back in our user interface here, we'll go back to the edit mode. And now what we want to do is load in our data that we can see our buttons. We'll go down to our button in the table right here. So we'll go to that child element. And now we're going to select a script. We're going to select our deletion script right here. And so now down under our inputs, we're going to make sure that we pass in a value from the virtual machine in each row in the table. So this is actually really easy to do using the connector interface in Windmill. What we want to do is just choose the little plug icon right here to connect this virtual machine name input parameter to a particular piece of data. And what data do we want to, con to connect it to? Well, we want to go to the selected row, so whatever row is currently selected in the table. And then we want to go down to the name property here to retrieve the name of the virtual machine that we want to delete. So as you can see, we're bound to our table the currently selected row, and the name of that particular virtual machine. So now we can go ahead and test that out. 
But before we actually test it out, I want to make sure that we also refresh our data after the virtual machine has been deleted. So with our button still selected down here, make sure that we have the delete instance button selected as a child of the table resource right here. What we want to do is go down to our triggers and we'll say that we want to trigger BTN load data anytime that we successfully run one of these deletion scripts, right? So after we want run the deletion script, it'll automatically kind of click this button, so to speak, for us, and it'll reload a fresh set of data from our SSH connection. Now, one other thing that we could do as well is to make sure that we load the data as soon as our application starts up. So what you'll see is back on our BTN load data, which is this button in the top right corner here, we can choose to trigger on app load so that the very first time that we fire up our application, the data in this table gets automatically loaded and it doesn't wait for us to click on the button here. So let's go ahead and save the draft. We'll go over to our preview mode. And if you wait for just a second, you'll see that it does indeed automatically load our data for us. And now if we go ahead and click on one of these buttons, it should delete one of our virtual machines. So over in my SSH session here, I'm just gonna do watch and we'll say LXC list. And so we'll just keep an eye on our SSH session here to see if our virtual machines disappear. So over here in my UI, I'll just click on delete for U02. And if we watch our SSH session, you can see that U02 disappears. And if I click on delete for the first one, you'll see that that one disappears as well. Now I have a little bit of a bug here, which is probably related to the output from the script because the output of the deletion operation isn't the same as the listing operation. So we don't actually need to retrieve the results here at all. So I'm just going to go ahead and discard the results entirely and we'll just return from the function and not actually return any data from this main function. So that should fix the bug that we had there when we were deleting them. So technically our command ex executed just fine. We just were running into an error with retrieving the standard out because the LXC delete command doesn't actually emit any output when you delete the virtual machine. So we'll just deploy that change to our script right here. We'll go ahead and fire up a couple of more virtual machines like LXC or U02 rather. And I'll just spin up another one called U01 really quickly. This is what I really love about LXC or LXD rather is that it's just really easy to deploy virtual machine infrastructure on your bare metal Linux servers. And so what we'll do is fire up our application again and we'll just wait for our data to load right here or maybe just click on our button here to load some data. Let me actually go ahead and deploy the latest version. Let me go back to edit, deploy, and then we can go over to preview here. Now our two virtual machines are showing up again and we'll just click on delete. You can see no error appears this time and we'll do delete again. And we've fixed that error that we were getting with the standard output. And if we do LXC list, you can see that both of those virtual machines are gone. So that's pretty much the extent of what I wanted to show you is how to basically build Python backing scripts that use the Paramico library to SSH into a LexD server running on Ubuntu Linux and how to connect your windmill user interface like your table and your buttons to actually load that data from the SSH session, display that data and make it interactive by giving you the ability to delete virtual machines from that LexD server. So feel free to add whatever other functionality that you want to. You could launch virtual machines, you could launch containers, you could really just customize the entire heck out of the deployment process on a LexD server. But again, I love LexD because it allows you to create VMs and containers really easily. So check out my video series on LexD if you're interested in that topic. You can head over to my channel at youtube.com slash Trevor Sullivan and there's a couple of different playlists that I wanted to point you to. So on my homepage right here, you should see I've got a windmill.dev playlist featured right here. And I've also got LXD virtualization on Ubuntu Linux. And this right here is the playlist that I've been working on for the last several weeks that covers a lot of core concepts around how LexD works. So if you're looking for an easy way to spin up virtual infrastructure, please check out this playlist. And of course, keep an eye on my windmill.dev playlist as well. 
and we'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and share this video and playlist with your family, friends, and professional contacts. Take care.